Hey guys, welcome to 3shop.net. Today's video we are going to talk about unit testing. Uh, why we, sh we should be unit testing our application code and how to do the unit testing. Is it going to be helpful? Is it going to save us some time and the cost of our application? So, yep, uh, definitely unit testing is a big part, should be a big part of your development. It will reduce the, uh, you know, time you actually spend on testing it it really does and so let's get started first let's see uh, what are the advantages of unit testing so as a typical application developer what we normally do is to when we write something or we make any changes to our code what we do is we start the application or the as we call it the UI then we enter the values click a button that is supposed to call uh, the function and then we get the you know output back or the rate then get the result back get the result back and then we validate you know whether it is the result we are expecting back uh, so every time we make a small change we try to go through this step and this is a repeating process right every time we make a change we validate and pretty much we spend all our time or most of our time doing this because we're supposed to test whenever we write the code we are supposed to test if it is working or not working right okay so that's that's one part of the benefits of the unit testing that it can save us time the second thing is like when we are refactoring our code let's say we have written like 10 or 12 of uh, 20 methods and you know um, sometimes one thing can uh, affect the other functions like if you are right uh, road method one and method two if you make changes it, sh it should not be ideally uh, but let's let's say they're interfering with each other and you don't know that so if you have not written the unit test you are actually not testing uh, the, you are only testing method one but you are not testing method two which is actually uh, in in that case breaking method two and there is no way you are supposed to know whether it is breaking or not till the time actually you go ahead and test that thing as well so you know what I'm trying to say so if you're not writing unit tests you probably have to um, probably have to test everything manually uh, and maybe at the end of the day or end of the week you have to schedule some time after you know uh, making a lot of changes when when you are rolling out to production you are supposed to go out and taste the entire thing everything all the functionality manually it's it's really time consuming but in unit test what you can do is you yeah you just click uh, r run all your tests and those are automatic tests and it will just uh, show you whether anything has broken and it's it's a matter of like maybe 35 to 30 seconds that that should be the ideal time for 25 methods or 30 methods or less than that more than that but in that range so it, it's it's quite fine so uh, how we are going to write the unit test so let's get started so here uh, the rule of the unit test like uh, let's create a class library and I will say this one as let's name this one as 3 sharp dot later okay so here we have a class I will just name this class was um, calculator I will rename everything and let's say I will have public and add int a int b and written a plus b this is a pretty simple method and that is what we are uh, we are going to test now so normally this is a class library if you only really test it's it's a very simple code but if you really want to test this function if you're calling from an asp.net application you have to press f5 uh, then you should be having two text boxes which will take int a and int b values and then press a submit button it should come here you will then see the value what exactly you are getting 
back from A plus B, even if it is a very simple, simple function. If you are going to test it from UI, you have to go through all the steps. So you have to press F5 on ASP.NET application. You have to start the UI. There should be two text boxes. And then uh, what you'll be doing is uh, provide the values for text box one, text box two, and then press submit. And then you will see the value back. So this is what is the normal flow of our regular testing is if we're not using unit test. So let's see how we can actually simplify this step using unit test. So let's go ahead and write a unit test project to our application. So I will just go ahead and type unit test. Unit test.net framework C sharp. This is the one. So the naming convention normally should be um, yeah the project name uh, dot unit test. So in our case I will say three sharp dot calculator dot unit test all right and here we have the unit test and so in the naming conversion should be again calculator test all right and uh, so here we have like I will just go through quickly what this class is. so this is virtual studio unit test case unit test suit so we have a test class which means um, this class is supposed to be picked up by the unit test class test library and this is a test method so it is going to again the test should should be picking up this method so that we can go ahead and test and again now I will just test through the naming convention of the method so it should be what we are testing right so we are testing the calculator add function so I will just name this one add and the scenario the scenario here is uh, scenario and expected Rachel so this should be the method name scenario and expected Rachel so the scenario is uh, pass valid integers get some back right so this this is this should be name of your unit test methods right so and then there will be three parts to your unit test that is uh, arrange assert and then the last one is Sorry, arrange uh, assert is the last one. This one is act. So in the arrange part, what we're going to do is the first thing we are going to arrange. That's it. So let's add a reference to our class library which we are trying to test. So it's three our three sharp calculator, and here I will create a var lc equal to new calculator cool. and that is the arrange part we are creating the object there and then uh, in the act part we are actually going to call the method so say rachel equals to lc dot add one comma two right and assert is where we are actually going to test so we are going to say assert dot r same. So we have part, we know one two should return three, right? So uh, so first one is expected. What we actually uh, expect. So we know one plus two equal to three. So we expect it to be three, and uh, the actual. What is the actual? That is, we are actually getting back from our method. So this is a pretty simple unit test case. So you, you, you might think, uh, you know, it's taking a long time to write this test. This is taking a long time because I'm trying to explain, and simultaneously I'm trying to write. And the second thing is, it's it's it. How much time you are going to take to write this much of code? Maybe five minutes. Don't hit me for saying just five minutes. But this is yeah. For this simple case, it's going to take max of five minutes right and uh, this is one time right so I'm not trying to push unit tests but just give it a try yourself and see how if it really helps 
if it really helps just go ahead and start using i'm just trying to explain the theory and yeah i'm trying to advocate a little bit but it's really beneficial so and enough let's go to the test explorer now there is nothing because we have not built it so let's build the unit test case oh, sorry the project and as soon as we do this we sh yep so actually i have seen few courses one of one is from the Mosh Hamdani. He's he's a really great author. I'm a big fan of him. But he's he has somehow in his unit test course he mentioned that you are you won't be able to actually <laughs> unit test individual functions in Visual Studio, and that's why he um, yeah he uh, talks about some other tools to use. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure whether he really doesn't know uh, that we can actually test individual test cases in Visual Studio. Just build them and right click and say run selected test. Uh, I don't know why he said like that. Ah, we actually got an error. What is that? Message assert R same fail do not pass value types. Oh, my bad. So let's say R equal and I will say selected test. And now it passed. See, it's 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 that simple. Now it really doesn't matter. Now if uh, you know, uh, now so let's say somebody has changed something, and you know, uh, somehow like we have changed something, uh, or we have written some other function which is actually interfering with our add method, and we don't know we have written like hundred methods, and we have not tested. But when let's uh, we, ha we have written this unit case and someday we come back and we say hey just run all the unit tests and let's see what is happening so hey it fails so what is saying expected is three and what we are getting back is four so the unit test is failing so you see that like you're not testing this individually you're not going to a console application or web application you're just saying hey run out whatever the unit test i have written run everything and if anything has changed anything has changed it it's 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 going to so you say hey why it is giving me back so it says stack traces calculated test dot add pass valid initials we go there and uh, it's it's not showing a lot of information at this moment but it it gives you uh, it will give you the stack trace it lots of information based on your method so let's go to this method and then when you come back you can actually debug so you can set a breakpoint sorry you can set a breakpoint here so breakpoint here and then you say hey debug the test and Yep. Now we got the um, you know we we without actually any UI we are able to test our application. We are able to say hey there is A B and that's fine. But where it is returning four? So you can see A is this, B is and there is an extra one. So you can just debug from here. How is it is without firing the, up the UI? Starting the UI, logging it, providing the values, and doing all these things. Just right click. How much time does it take to run a, a simple unit test? It's let's see. After making the change, my, after making the change, how much time does it take? Hey, it's 28 milliseconds. How much time it is going to save you from all all those changes? Right after you make uh, refactor your code, you don't have to worry if you're refactoring this method and you have made some changes. You really don't have to fire up the UI to test all these pieces. It's 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 wonderful here. So I strongly suggest you start writing your unit tests and spend some time. There are a few great books. Uh, go through them, and yep, uh, come back and I will. I'm also going to write a few more unit case, case, test cases here, and yep, we will try to see what are the advantages i'm also exploring and i will keep you guys informed thanks for watching keep if you have any questions any concerns um yeah feel free to feel free to leave those in the comments and i will get back to you and yep uh, please subscribe to my channel trisha.net thanks for watching have a good day or good night